I know that you've spoken about this concept of body set weight, Dr. Fung, this idea that people will naturally gravitate given enough time to this set weight, regardless of how much or little they eat. And this must be incredibly frustrating for people trying to lose weight. How can people genuinely change their body set weight? Yeah, so this is the concept of the body set weight, which is um, the sort of, uh, it's sort of like a thermostat, right? So a thermostat in a room, for example, you set a room temperature and if it gets too hot, it'll turn on the air conditioning and it's automatic. And if it gets too cold, it's going to turn on the heat all the way, always adjusting back the room back to that sort of ideal temperature. And the body has a very similar homeostatic mechanism where you have a certain weight. And if you go above the weight, your body is actually going to try to burn more calories. And they've done this study where they take people, they force feed them and so that they gain weight and they gain 10% body weight. And what happens is when you measure their metabolic rate, it actually goes up. So your body actually tries to burn it off. So you, they actually burn about four or 500 uh, uh, calories more than before in an effort to get the weight back down. And of course, it goes the other way too. So if you lose weight, then your body burns fewer calories to try and get that weight back up. And so the question is not, you know, how do I adjust my calories to bring my weight up? So if you think about this homeostatic mechanism, so say you have a room temperature, it's at a room temperature. Now you bring in a, a little portable heater and you heat up the room saying, I'm too cold. I want to heat up the room. So you heat up the room. The problem, of course, is that the thermostat is going to sense that the room temperature has gotten higher. It's gotten hotter. So it's going to turn on the air conditioning. So you've got the heat going and the air conditioning going at the same time. Same thing in your body. So your body, if it has a weight, that's set and you don't like that weight. Now you want to drop your weight, right? So you eat fewer calories. The problem is the body is going to sense, oh, my weight has gone down. So I'm going to make you more hungry. Or if that doesn't work, I'm going to start slowing down my metabolism so that I get my body weight back up. So the question of how to get the room higher, uh, you know, hotter or colder is not about how much heat I can bring in or how much air conditioning I can bring in. The question is how do I set that thermostat? Same thing in the body. So if you have a body set weight, which is set too high for you, the question is not about how, how many calories do I need to cut or how many whatever, because if you simply cut your calories, your body will then lower your metabolic rate to bring, bring the weight back up. The question is how do you adjust that body set weight? And what sets it? Well, same as everything else. There's obviously a component of genetics, but it all comes down to the hormones. So if you think about genetics, Genetics can explain a lot of the interpersonal differences. So certain people are more prone to weight gain than others. That's, that happens, right? Some people are sort of born very chubby and some people are born very skinny. Everybody knows somebody who's super, super skinny and no matter what they do, they can't gain weight, right? Most of us worry about the other side, but there's a huge genetic component to it. It's about 70% actually, but it, what it doesn't explain is how an entire population, such as really the population of the world, it used to be an American problem, but now it's a worldwide problem, how the entire world got fatter because our genetics have not changed in the last 50 years on a worldwide scale. So therefore something is gradually moving our body set weight up. And what sets the body weight? Same thing that, that happens with everything else. It's really up to the hormones. So if you uh, give a lot of insulin, if you increase the amount of insulin that people are generating, you're going to move that body set weight up. If you increase the amount of GLP it's producing, for example, by giving Ozempic or Manjaro, well, you're going to gradually move that body set weight down. So it's really the interplay of all these hormones that feed into weight loss. There's actually more to it. Uh, you know, there's things like dopamine, which uh, exa uh, for example, is a uh, neurotransmitter, uh, most notably used for reward systems. So it creates, uh, you know, pleasure, that, that kind of thing. So what, what happens, of course, is that certain foods, especially highly, highly processed foods, we see stimulate serotonin and dopamine, part of our reward system in the brain. So if you start giving people foods that are going to be addictive, that are going to be rewarding, like sugar and so on, 
well, you're going to get pe people are going to eat or they're going to be addicted and that's going to move that thing. So not only all these hormones, but a lot of neurotransmitters and stuff. So, you know, that body set weight is ties in very closely to the idea that you really have to look at the hormones that are setting that body weight and not just the calories involved. Calories is a very simplistic sort of level. It's sort of like if you have the, the thermostat in your room and you say, well, the temperature in the room is heat in minus heat out. So I'm going to bring in my portable heater. I'm going to heat up this room. And then it doesn't work and you go, no, it has to be heat in minus heat out. That's thermodynamics. It's like, no, you completely ignored the thermostat. <laughs> it is heat in, heat out, but you're bringing in heat. The thermostat's bringing in the air conditioning. Same thing in the body. You say it's calories in, calories out. I cut my calories. Well, your body cut the calories you spend. So it's like, why would you expect the body fat percentage to change? Well, it won't because you didn't pay attention to that thermostat, which is all about the hormones. How are you going to move it less towards insulin? Because insulin moves it up. So you want to move it down. You want less insulin. Well, intermittent fasting is a great way to do it. And that intermittent fasting has disappeared since the 1970s, right? People went the other way. They said you should eat 10 times a day, right? You should eat all the time. You should eat while you're walking. You should eat while you're driving. You should eat while you're in the theaters. You should eat while you're in front of your computer. You should eat while you're working, all of this stuff, right? You should snack all the time. Well, I understand the, the results that finally came off the, the biggest loser competitors was quite a compelling, um, I guess, argument against the whole, the whole cal calorie intake, calorie outtake uh, theory. Oh, absolutely. Because this was, and, and really what happened in The Biggest Loser, uh, so this was an American reality uh, show where people basically cut their calories to very, very low levels. Um, and they started losing weight, which is great, until they started to, um, you know, you could see because they, they uh, took these people and measured their metabolic rate, which we don't normally do for most people, but they did for this study. And what they found was that as they're cutting their calories, just as you would predict, if you don't focus on eating the right foods, then your body has to burn fewer calories because you're not able to pull those calories out. So their metabolic rate kept dropping and dropping and dropping. By the end of six months, I think they're burning 500 calories per day, less than they were before. And those didn't change. Even after six years, some of them were burning six, 700 calories less every single day. So this is the problem, right? So if you cut 500 calories out, right, you go 2000 calories, you go down to 1500, but your body has cut 700 off the expenditure, right? So now your body's burning 1300. So even though you're eating 1500 calories, your body's now burning 1300 calories, you are regaining all of that weight. And in fact, when they did those six year follow up studies of that particular group of uh, biggest loser patients, I think the average weight regain was 90 pounds, 90 pounds. Like that's insane. All because, you know, people didn't focus. They focused only on the calories, which is, as I said, only a single part of it. Right. Like, how can I, I just don't understand how people cannot understand? Like, it's like saying, you know, it's like the savings, right? If you want to know how much savings you have, you need to know not only how much money you're making, but where that money is going. OK, so if you want to know where those calorie savings are going and coming, you need to know the number of calories. But are you burning it or saving it? That's really important. Right. If you don't focus on that, then your body is going to respond. And this is the way the average contestant responded. So then people regain all that weight. They regain 90 pounds on average. And then people said, oh, they, they, they went off their diet. No, they didn't. They were still eating 1500 calories, but their body went down to 1300 calories. So that's almost like the worst of both worlds, right? So you're cold, you're tired, you're hungry, and you're regaining weight. And everybody's saying, oh, you're just cheating on your diet when they're not, right? And completely unfair because people look at them and think, oh, you know, they didn't do this, they didn't know. The problem was that what is taught to experts, what's taught to, taught to doctors, what's taught to dietitians, you read any 
standard textbook of obesity, they'll tell you it's all about the number of calories. I'm like, I don't understand how that can be so, people can be so like blinded to the fact that the body doesn't actually respond to calories. The body only responds to hormones, right? So hormones is what tells your body what to do. If you want to grow, you need a hormone to tell you to grow. If you want to go into menopause, you need hormones to tell you to go into menopause. If you want to go through puberty, you need hormones to tell you to go through puberty. That's just the way our body works. It has to have those instructions. It doesn't take a piece of meat and then all of a sudden grow. It has to be translated through the hormones to tell our body what to do. So that translation is really important. So hormones are the thermostat and need to be a key consideration if people seriously want to lose weight. One thing I know that is really central to this weight loss process is this switch from, from burning glucose to burning fat. And I understand this burning fat phase is, is known as ketosis. Could you say a little bit about that, Dr. Fung, and, and how insulin factors into making this switch from burning glucose to burning fat? Yeah. So the, the whole idea is that ketosis is a way uh, that our body has um, of burning fat. So remember, there's two fuel sources. Your body can burn glucose and it can burn fat. Glucose is a uh, form of energy that's easily accessible. So it's stored in the liver, but um, you can easily get it out of the liver. But there's a limited amount. So you can last for if, if your glucose stores are full, you can last about 24 hours. So the advantage is that it's easy to get to. The disadvantage is that there's only 24 hours. The body fat is a complementary form of calorie storage, which is that it's harder to get to because it's harder to pull fat out, but you can carry a lot more of it. So you can go for days. So 50 pounds of body fat, 175,000 calories is enough for 100 days of not eating. So a huge, you can carry a huge amount of calories in your body fat, but it's harder to get to. So those two things are important. Uh, ketosis is where you're, you got, so kind of go through all your glucose stores and now you're burning fat. When you burn fat, the, the brain can't actually use fat directly. So the liver actually makes from the fat, cell, uh, from the fat molecules, it makes ketone bodies, which is why you have ketosis and the ketones can actually go into the brain as a source of fuel. So the reason people like to do ketogenic diets or go into ketosis is that they, they want to be sure that they're burning fat. So that's the, the, the idea is that you can actually make sure you're burning fat by measuring ketones. Insulin is that major, major switch that switches you from storing energy to burning energy. 